Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now this is the last month of the year and also a few days to the celebration of the birth of Jesus. Praise God. This is the season we celebrate Jesus. And all over the world, most part of the world is conscious of this celebration. And as we prepare for this celebration, we also prepare for the winding down of the year 2023. And I'm trusting the Lord to do a miracle in your life this year. I pray that this season you will be remembered like never before. I pray that the Lord will open the book and find your portion in the year 2023 and let it be multiplied to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray that the Lord will call to remembrance your offerings, your gifts that you have given, your good works you have done this year, and count it as righteousness for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I bless you with the presence of God this year for 2023. Reap the harvest of every seed you have sown let it come to you this month in the like of what happened to isaac he said and isaac sowed in that land and in the same year he received a hundredfold i pray over you this year you will receive a hundredfold harvest of your good seeds in the name of the lord jesus christ amen i also use this opportunity to pray for those of you who the Lord have been leading, you know, to, to give for the work that we are doing. You are the one who God have used physically to sustain what we are doing because of your generous gifts. And it's amazing because you fellowship with the Lord and you hear his voice. He commands you to give and you obey him. I always tell people this, it makes the work easier because if God is the one commanding you and you have obeyed him, I don't even need to pray for you, even though we pray for you on a daily basis. But the truth is this, whether we pray for you or we don't pray for you, the one you have obeyed has a reason in his heart why he commanded you to give. He wasn't just thinking of us. Yes. He was thinking of meeting our needs, our physical needs. But then he looked around and chose you. That makes you special to him. And that means, remember, he's a God of purpose. That means there is a purpose he has seen that this your obedience to him will bring to you. And our prayers are always very simple for you. Father, the reason you commanded this person to give to us, let it be fully accomplished in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I expect a miracle in your lives. Praise God. Yes, I do. Glory to Jesus Christ. Amen. Before we go into today's broadcast, we've been talking about tithes and offerings. That's what we've been talking about. And I'll tell you the reason we've been sharing this. But before we go into all that, can we make demand for our daily bread join me right now as we declare say father i demand now my daily bread it is coming to me in jesus name amen praise god thank you lord jesus now the reason the lord is asking us to deal with this topic now some of you might trivialize things like this. Some of you, um, you've been influenced by ministers that were not commanded by God to talk about this subject. And then they have taught you blunders. Now, hear me and hear me good. We are entering into a very difficult season. Now, you don't need a prophet to even tell you that you can sit down and look at this physically but then also why the prophetic is important in this is the fact that you want to know 
how God's hand is on the events that are going to happen. When I mean God's hand, I mean if God is permitting it or if God is the one behind it. There are two things there. But you want to know because there are certain things that must happen. There is no amount of intercession that can stop it. It must surely happen. See, when God revealed to Joseph or to Pharaoh the years of famine and the years of plenty, the years of plenty and the years of famine that was to come, there was no amount of prayer that could have stopped that. So he revealed it so that the people will prepare. And Egypt had that wisdom because of Joseph and they prepared for it. They knew what to do with the seven years of harvest. Now, those seven years of harvest didn't only come on Egypt. It came all over the world. See that now? I know I've told you before that that's, that's how life is programmed. Life generally has ups and downs. Some people say, no, there is no ups and downs. No, there is. There is. Praise God. There are ups and downs. There's not, you can't change it. You can pray against it. The only wisdom that can be given to you is how to remain on top even in the seasons of ups and downs. So when you're on the mountaintop, you're on top. When you're on the, in the valley, you're still on top in the valley. That's the only advantage you will get. But to change life, not to have ups and downs, it's already finished. That's, that's the way it has been created. You can't do anything about that. So you had seven years of plenty, then followed by seven years of terrible famine. Israel, that is Jacob, did not have this information as Joseph had it. Now, why, is, why was that? Because God had determined that in that season, he will honor his word to Joseph. Some of you don't understand the reason things happen the way they happen. I was talking to you know, my spiritual dad, Apostle Kure, a few days ago. And we were talking about something happening in our nation. And then he said something. I had said something to him. I said, I, I, I saw in my spirit that you were, you did this in this area. You know, we're like, well, let's see if the Lord will lead that, will open that door. And then he began to tell me, he said, look, do you know years ago, now, in my place of prayer, I have seen the Lord show me this. Then he was now speaking to me. He said, years ago, this is what the Lord led us to do in that place. And that's the reason this has been happening the way it has been happening. I'm like, wow. Now, you see, physically, what has been happening is not something naturally I have liked. You know, I've looked at this like, why? Why is this event happening this way you know we've prayed about it i've personally prayed about it and it seems like the more you pray the more things get dark in that situation so until now I had, in my own prayer i saw my spiritual father do something and that was the signaling of a change in that situation so now i'm sharing with him and then he's now telling me several years ago, up to like 25 years ago. This is what happened. And I was led to do this. Now, since then, that is why this thing, I said, whoa. now I didn't know what happened 25 years ago. That was the first time I was hearing it. I can't talk about the details because of the sensitivity of it, but something I have to do with our nation. I said, wow. So I said, okay, now I understand what I saw. Now, what do you do? You don't force it. You don't go by yourself and say, oh, I want to do. No. You wait if the season of change have come. Then the Lord will move the people to do certain things. And then, now I've seen what's going to happen. And that's the Lord showing me things to come. You see? So, this is how um, life is. Many times you don't know the reason behind certain actions. You pray, you do all kinds of things to change it. It doesn't change. 
you don't understand if God has permitted it. Elijah said, for example, look, rain is not going to fall until I say otherwise. And there was no rain for three and a half years. Now, do you think everybody in Israel was a bad person? No. The famine affected lots of people, lots of good people. The famine affected other intercessors also. But God honored the word of one of his servants and there was no rain. There were good people that had farmlands. There was no rain to bring forth harvest. So the whole land was on lockdown, very bad situation. Now, instead of God waking up to say, let me change this thing, this my servant have said, no. He, what did he do? He told the, the, the man of God, because a widow has been crying, says, move from that brook to the house of the widow so the widow can be sustained. See that now? Now, God didn't change the, 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 the thing. Imagine every other person that was praying. It's like God is not answering. Until God came to his servant, Elijah, and said, go and show yourself to him because, hey, it's enough. We need to send down it. So Elijah had to go back. Now, he was the one that shut the heavens. He was still the one that opened the heavens. Now, God used him. You understand what I mean, what I mean by that? Now, this is life for you. So because you don't know, I'm teaching you. Now, this is where the teaching um, office comes in. The teaching office, see, there is the prophetic office and then there is the teaching office, see? Now, the prophet will speak as he's moved by God. Even the prophet most times may not be able to explain. He have just spoken. But a teacher is given insight by the Lord to see God's operations. And from that, explain. Then you, having that explanation, looking at what the prophet have done, who say, oh, I see. For example, all you see in what Elijah did was he shut down the heavens. But what you don't understand is there are several things that have transpired that even the shutting down of heaven worked in God's favor in that season. And that's not today's talk. But you see, now that's what a teacher does so that the people, because someone not, not, knowing, not knowing this will become angry and offended with God. God is not fair. You shut down. Can you imagine no rain? Is there anything we can? You're the giver of rain. Now you didn't allow rain to fall. All my crops did not do well this year. You see? Because they don't know what transpired behind the scene. Now I'm saying all this to tell you this. Prepare for 2024. As a teacher of God's truth, I've been commanded to teach you the things that I'm teaching you. And it is in your place to listen and operate. Now, what is going to happen is not just in Nigeria and Asia, all over the world. No one is going to be spared. There's going to be a famine come on the world. Things are going to get more difficult. But here, in this same season, God will want to honor his children that are in covenant with him but you see satan now you, you see some of you don't know how much satan have been trying to bring so much darkness on the earth now you've heard people come against titan you've heard people come against first fruit you've heard people come against giving giving to the lord you've heard preachers come heavily on it what they don't know is they open and I want you to listen to me hard. I have, a, I have a right to teach you this because the Lord have spoken to me concerning it. That's my authority. What they don't know is that they opened their hearts to the ministry of the serpent. Yes. You remember what Jesus said, and I'm going to revisit that also. He says, you shall take up serpents. Who will take up serpents? Those that believe in Jesus. They will take up serpents. Now, the serpents, they will take up 
is what I'm dealing with. Now, when I said those preachers open their hearts to the ministry of the serpent, the serpent is not just a human being. The serpent is a spirit that communicates its thoughts through human beings. Of course, you know the serpent is the devil. So when he says, you shall take up serpents, the first of all, he says, you shall cast out devils. The difference between demons and the serpent is this. The demons oppose you. Serpents beguile you. You know, the serpent becomes your friend. He acts like I'm on your side. Then he brings forth his suggestions and then throw you away. He throws you off balance. So when somebody suddenly comes and say, Hey, I've discovered Titan is not part of the law. Oh no, Titan is part of the law and the law has been abolished. So you don't need to tight anymore. Hey, eh, eh, I knew it. You don't understand that the serpent has beaten that fellow and by his by giving him their fruits and they ate it and now they are running with the message of the serpent brothers and sisters this is a very serious issue the ministry of the serpent is the same ministry of the Antichrist so when Jesus said they shall take up serpents, he wasn't referring to going to the bush and pick snakes. He was talking about those who believe in Jesus will take up those who are of the Antichrist and those who function by the spirit of the Antichrist. That's our duty as those who believe in Jesus Christ. So you don't let things like this slide. Oh, that's their business. No! You remember Peter. Now this was Peter. He came to visit Paul. And while he was with Paul for many days, then suddenly some guys came from James to visit them. And Paul suddenly noticed Peter began to behave strange after these guys came. What was Peter doing? Now, Peter used to eat with the Gentiles because Paul was surrounded by Gentiles. So Peter used to eat with them. They joke, they play because Peter had received the personal revelation of God concerning the Gentiles and they are believing. Now, he was playing with them, eating with them. Then suddenly Paul noticed when these people came from James, oh, it's dinner time. You know, Peter was like, eh, can you serve my food to me in the room? Oh, okay. Well, maybe you want to study the word or something. Oh, yeah. I just want to have some time with the Lord. Okay. That was breakfast. Lunch time, same thing. Dinner time, same thing. Okay. I, I can just imagine Paul employing different strategy. Like, oh, Peter, okay, let's come and eat here. No, 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 no. And then Paul noticed that, hey, this is strange. I noticed Peter is refraining to fellowship with the Gentiles since these folks from James came. Ah, he took up Peter immediately. Now, it wasn't Peter he was taking up. He was taking up the serpents. He said, no, 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 Peter, you are wrong. I said, huh? he shouldn't speak. Do you know how long Peter was saved? <laughs> how the difference between Peter's salvation and when Paul got born again. No, but Paul said, no way. This is wrong. He challenged Peter. And Peter came to his senses. Now that's how we take up serpents. See, when, when, when the wrong thing is being spread and you keep quiet, you are letting the serpent have its way. The damage it's going to do. So hear me. Those who have told you not to give offerings, not to tithe, that it's not, it's not, a, it's not compulsory uh, 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 and, and things like that. Now, hear me. The first way the serpent came was to try to corrupt the offerings. See? But that didn't work because whether it's being corrupted or not, people were giving and people were being inspired to give. So the serpent came with another strategy. End the offering. Stop people from tithing. You see that now? It's the same strategy. But thank God for the Holy Spirit who helps us to deal with both sides and then bring forth the truth. That's what I'm doing on this broadcast. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Listen, if the serpent have beguiled you, 
you can repent. Oh, sure, you can repent and you should repent if you're a child of God. If you want to continue walking according to the ways of the serpent, flow. But there is an end to all things. And Jesus will be glorified in everything. My time is up today, but I'm going to continue with this tomorrow. I pray for you that the Spirit of God will take hold of your heart and bring forth His truth that He has deposited in you. And that truth will gain ascendancy over your mind and rule over your affairs. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.